Hi, it's Amy from MyMommyNeedsALife.com and I am doing a video on what I am doing to prep prep for the NCLEX exam, the National Council Licensure Exam for RN. I just recently graduated about a month ago, a little tiny bit over a month, and time's flying by. Uh, so let me just show you some of the things that I'm using. Some of these are things that I'm actually using daily. Some of them are things that I am using as references to look stuff up. And I'll just show you. Let's get into it. Med math. Oh, the dreaded med math. Yes. This is the med math book from my program. So, if there's just self-explanatory, you gotta know med math. Yes, you probably have IV pumps that can do it for you. You put in the numbers in the right spots and it calculates it for you. But NCLEX, NCLEX doesn't have IV pumps. So to go along with med math, <sighs> pharmacology. Yes, pharmacology, the dreaded P word. There's so much information to know. There's so many meds to know. Um, to go along with the med math and the pharmacology, I have this little Kaplan book. It's the NCLEX Review Drug Guide. 300 medications. There's no way you can memorize them all, but it's really nice to have this little tiny book. It gives you a med on the on one side of the page and on the other side it gives you side effects and nursing considerations for that med on the back. So it's nice to read over. It's nice to have if you just have a med that you just need to look up. Um, that's really not a med book. Our program we had every semester we paid for Kaplan and at the end you have a Four day live review with a Kaplan instructor comes to the school eight hours from nine to four, eight to four, yeah, eight to four, um, four days. And they also offer it online, a um, taped version. And I'm actually doing the taped version. Um, but this they gave us the basics, Kaplan basics. They gave us this book early on in the nursing program. And then right before, in our last semester, before we went to, this, to the um, content, to the live review, they gave us this NCLEX RN content review guide. Now I'm not going to show you inside of this. Um, you can go on Amazon and look it up, and I'm sure there's probably some place that'll give you something on the inside. But it's a thick book. It's a heavy book. All nursing bo books are thick. Um, it's just the way they are. Nurses have to know a lot of information. You're responsible. You're like the, the go-between between between the doctor and the patient, and you have to, you know, doctors make mistakes. There's residents out there that, you know, that are new and interns, and they make mistakes too. So you kind of sort of have to be their go-between. And if they do some say something that you don't think is the right thing to do, then you need to question it. That's your job. Um, your patient safety is your job, and it's up to you to make sure that the patient is okay and not harmed. Um, Davis's drug guide. This isn't the one that came in our program, but I liked it better. So I got this one. The Davis's drug guide. Again, along with the medications. Um, during my program, our teachers gave us what we call bound books. And I covered up the instructor's name in the school. And these are basically pertinent information on our lectures. It's like lecture notes typed up. And then I know somebody's going to ask, but do you take your own notes? And yes, I'm a highlighter. I'm a note taker. Um, I write all over the pages. So, and highlight the daylights out of them. But we got one uh, the last three semesters, and they were incredible. Um, speaking of incredible, 
I've got some of the incre made incredibly easy. So I'm going to go through these pretty quick because there's pictures in them. They're more in layman's terms. Um, they explain things sometimes a little bit better than some of the fancy nursing books get a little confusing. So if you're struggling with something, breath sounds incredibly easy. There's, there's pictures all over the inside of these. They are, it's kind of like the um, Books for Dummies medical version. Health assessment. It tells you how to palpate the liver. I mean, there's all kinds of information in here to do a proper health assessment. That was like the one that I really wanted first, and then it got me on these others. Heart sounds. Comes with a DVD. Ah, heart sounds. The breath sounds does too. That it's just that my DVD is not in there. Cardiovascular care. This one doesn't have a video, but it's got pictures everywhere. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Um, nursing care plan. This thing is amazing. I got compliments on my nursing diagnosis from this book. All right, let's 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 pick one out of the trigeminal neuralgia. Acute pain related to disorder of the fifth cranial nerve. I mean, it, it just gives you, it just tells you how, how to care plan. It's amazing. Um, auscultation skills. I don't remember if this came in my book. But this may have come in my, um, this may have come with my kit, with my books, but I don't remember if it did or not. I think it did, but I honestly don't remember. Um, nursing procedures. This thing, if you need to know, if you can't remember how to put in a G-tube, an NG tube, um, you don't remember how to give a shot um, or where to give a shot. That's funny that I said that because then I open it right up to giving injections. I am injections, places to give I am injections. There's pictures galore in this book. I love pictures. I learn with pictures. I'm a very visual learner. I'm a hands-on. You teach me how to do it, I'll do it, and I'll learn from it, and then next time maybe I can do it by myself. Uh, another thick book. Lippincott's Q&A and Clex RN. This is a really good book, too. Um, free CD-ROM with questions. You can there's a, a CD with it that you can put in your computer and it'll just randomly ask you questions. Um, that's really good. This book did come with our program Prioritization, Delegation, and Assignment. And it's look, we called it a little charity book. Um, this thing was amazing. It is amazing. I took the, um, I'm doing the Kaplan Question Trainers and I actually did the, um, the question trainer, the, re, the, the NCLEX sample three, and that is a delegation, and I got like an 83 point something. And anybody that does Kaplan reviews knows 83 is good. I mean, like, you don't get graded like 100. Like, if you get five right, you get, I mean, it's not graded like a normal test. Um, 83 is a high number. And then I bought this one. This is also an NCLEX review with a practice test. I'm going to do this at some point, I think. Um, and then, I like compact things. I like things I can take with me. So this little NCLEX RN notes, it's tiny. You can throw it in your purse. It's got content, um, content, and content, and more content. I actually have two more little books like this. One is lab tests, and uh, one is like the it has a lot of different things like lab values and different things in there and then this is actually something that I'm going to take with me probably to work because there's no harm in saying I don't know something there is harm in could be harm in treating a patient when you know you don't know about it and you do something anyway so this book here nurses quick check diseases this is amazing it has a lot of information just pick out Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Both pages are on arthritis. It tells you stuff like causes, incidents, complications, what you need to do for assessment, what you need to do for treatment, what kind of lab values um, do you expect to have to know, um, key 
key outcomes, monitoring, patient teaching, like discharge planning, what kind of things do you need to teach them when they're getting ready to go home. That book is awesome and I will take it to work with me. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the Kaplan. So I have a schedule. Um, let me put you down so that you can see this because um, I can't explain this very well. So let me show it to you. Okay, so here's my schedule. This I've made myself. I'm doing the online sessions for testing for to show um, the, the questions that like the live review, but this is the online sessions. I've done session four. I've started on session five today. I um, actually did part of this on the seventh and I'm gonna finish up session five, start on session six if I can and finish that up on tomorrow. Um, on the 9th and then the 39 and 35s as you see those 39 and 35 um, those are review guides see down here I have read study guide the study guide read like if I write read on here that's this content review thing from Kaplan um, that's not really something I'm just gonna like sit down and read but it's stuff that I'm gonna go over um, 39 and 35 are study guides. I'll show you those and I do have links below to the, the, those two study guides. Now these two study guides are links are correct and working as of the date of this posting. If either one of these are no longer available I apologize but they are free. I did not pay for them. They were not not copyrighted as far as I know so I'm basically linking you to where I got them. Um, Lab, I'll, inc I'll put a link below also to my lab values, um, NCLEX lab values, and then these, the purples, are the question trainers or the NCLEX sample tests on online on Cap Kaplan. So I'm doing question trainer one, three times, two, three times, three, three times, and then four, five, and six twice, and seven, there's 265 questions. I will do that at least once, possibly twice, I don't know. The NCLEX... Uh, samplers are one, two, three, and four. Number three is the one that was delegation that I've already done and got an 80 something on it. I think I have it. The um, yeah, 83.3 is what I got because I'm writing down what um, I'll show you that in a second. No, my light go off. So those are this is my schedule. Um, I'm trying my best to stick to it or add where I need or take off where I need. I am practicing med math. Um, you'll see when I say 35, it says 35 and charts. I will show you what I mean by charts um, because the 35 page one is like only half a page on each page and it's big font so it's not nearly as much as you think it is to read the other stuff and that. 39 however the 39 page one I'm not reading anything but that one at the, those days because that one is big it's smaller print and it's full pages and your lab La Charity if I need any more work on La Charity which I think I have delegation down pretty well because I got an 83.3 on the NCLEX sampler and that's pretty high um, according to the lady I asked she said it was pretty high and then my med book like this book my meds um, and there's meds in the Kaplan review guide too. So let me take this away for a second and bring this in. This is my NCLEX prep. Can you see that up there? Yeah, NCLEX prep. This is my prep guide. Um, oops. There's my July in case I don't get to take it in June, which I don't know for sure. This here is the, I don't want to show you all of this because it's Kaplan's information. It's, um, the decision tree from Kaplan and I don't want to give away their stuff so because it's expensive and I don't want to get in trouble uh, this is nursing mnemonics if you go to nrsng.com you can sign up for their emails they send you free content on Fridays and I just happen to print this one and this one um, these are my NCLEX as I'm taking the test, my scores, I did not try on the question trainer one nearly as much. Um, and then, uh, but I went up from a 46.7 to a 66.7. I haven't taken it the third time. 
there is my NCLEX sample 3, 83.3. My predictor test, uh, we took a test in class that was a predictor test uh, from Kaplan, and that basically said, um, based on your score, you had a certain percentage of passing, and based on my 62.7, I had a 95% chance of passing the NCLEX if I took it that day, and that was sometime in the first part of April. And I'm not going to show you this next one, even though you can find it online, because this is somebody else's scores, and I'm just kind of comparing my scores. Um, even though, you, like I said, you can find that online if you just type in NCLEX study guides or schedules, study schedules and stuff, you can find a lot of this information yourself. So it's not like it's not like it's not out there. It's not like it's some private. It's already out there. Um, these are just random notes that, as I hear something, I write it down. Um, like the three G's that make your blood thin and you have to be careful with anticoagulants, ginger, ginkgo, and garlic. Those are the three G's that are really um, not good to do a lot of while you're taking an anticoagulant. Um, so in medications, I'm finding that this is helping me. Um, beta blockers, O-L-O-L -L is the suffix for beta blockers. And then I just write down information about the random category of beta blockers, not specific medications. I don't know if you can see all that. Yeah. Not like specific beta blockers, like I just mainly write um, general information about them, about that classification. And then calcium channel blockers is the D I P I N E, like nifedipine. That is a calcium channel blocker. I wrote information, basic information about those. Um, ACE inhibitors are PRILs, um, lisinopril, that's a good one, um, dry cough, that's a big side effect that you need to watch for. And then these are, um, this was from the pharmacology book that I showed you earlier. I wanted to um, write down about anticholinergics and acetylcholine and norepinephrine and just understand things a little bit better. And just trying to memorize now that I've been through the systems and know more about the systems just a reminder a refresher because it's been over a year and a half ago since we really listed the the five R's the five rights um, right patient right med right dose right route and right time um, just stuff like that I even wrote add pie down assess you know you know what add pie is if you're in nursing school um, more just random facts that as I um, go through CHF, worst pulmonary edema, if it's getting worse, then they have pulmonary edema, they can't lay down. Um, so asking them about their sleep, if they're having congestive heart failure, is a good thing to ask about, um, which you may not always think about sleep with congestive heart failure, but it kind of ties it together. Um, some like murder, muscles, urine, respiratory, you can read that. Um, more just random facts, some med math, um, just random stuff. This is my immunization chart. I actually found this one line as well. I can't remember where it was. It might have been in allnurses.com. There's a lot of stuff in that forum where people help each other. Um, so from that information, I made this chart. And we didn't get a lot of peds experience. Um, so I feel like that's one of my weak areas, so I, like immunization schedules and stuff. So it, I made it into this chart, and then I also, the what they wrote, what she wrote to, I, I'm a, I think it was a lady, what she wrote, um, the only vaccine at birth is the hepatitis B um, at two months. Basically, you get all of these at two months, four months, and six months, except for hepatitis B. You don't have it at four months, but you do at birth. So it switches. And then 12 months to 15 and 12 to 18, you've got these here. And then you've got um, HPMB. That's a way to remember the HPMB. And it's like remembering Hewlett Packard MD. That was pretty cool. I, I liked how she did that. Um, and then these three, the first three, have 12s at the left. The last three have 12 at uh, 18s at the right, you know, so the 12 to 18, 12 to 18, and then the 15s are in the corners. So that was a really neat way for me to remember. 
um, Maslow's hierarchy, you're going to see this again, I promise you. When, if you, especially if you do Kaplan, you are going to live by Maslow. That's good. You're going to see it over and over every single question. Again, random facts. These are some of the medications, um, more suffixes, that um, that weren't in the NCLEX prep book. Some of them were, some of them weren't. weren't. Like LAM, like diazepam, um, not diazepam, um, LAMs, here's PAMs, anti-anxiety. Uh, I saw the anti-anxiety and the AM and I didn't realize that it was LAM, not PAM. But they're this, LAM or PAM are both anti-anxiety agents. This here is from Hey Rona. <laughs> And if she, I'm sure she will never see this video, but if she ever does, thank you, because this is amazing. Um, this is the 35 page one that I was telling you about earlier. It's 35 pages, but it's only half size pages. These are all, this written over again. Um, so this is the 35 pages. As you can see, they're all like half pages. So I, I learn better when I write, so I just rewrote them. But this is the 35 page one. And like I said, you can see that they're not huge writing. And then I even drew picture high fowlers. Um, just random stuff on them. Then these are some NCLEX tips. Like never ask the patient why or say do not worry. You can't tell the patient don't worry. You can't tell them they're going to be okay. Um, because you can't guarantee that. Um, then these are the list. Another list of suffixes and then you get to the 39 page one again this one is linked below like the hey Rona is linked also I'll put a link to her video where I got it from so that you can go watch her video this is like I said a lot of information and then you just get random facts Cullen sign um, stuff that you definitely need to know digoxin medications um, There must be a skunk outside or something because the dogs are going crazy. Um, here is the NCLEX um, the NCLEX lab values. I put a link below to this as well. Um, so you can get it. My diagnostic test, which basically your diagnostic is telling you what content you know. And I got a 67.8 and she said that was excellent score so we'll see oh, I don't want to give you Kaplan information Kaplan information um, I found this one line if you just like type in heart failure signs it gives you right heart failure and left heart failure signs um, I printed that out way before when I was actually doing the heart failure stuff these again are random facts hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. Not only do you need to know what those mean and what they do, you need to know what um, fluids are isotonic and hypertonic. Um, there was one thing I forgot to show you too that I've made on my schedule. My son right here is going to ODU. Um, he's leaving in August for four years. So um, I mark those off to make sure that I don't sign up for those days to remind myself that we're going to ODU and to not test on this day right here. No test. Can you see that? Yeah. Because I want to go down the night before and spend the night for my test and I can't do that if I'm on the way home from the beach because ODU is right by the beach so we're going to go to the beach for two days. I do have this sticker here. Test day. Can you see that? Pretty test day sticker. Um, it's not on my calendar yet because I don't have a test date. And I wanted to do this and show this before I did have a test date because if I do have one, it's going on here and I didn't want to show that. So <sighs> that's why I showed it now. I'm making a list of certain drugs that I need to know. Like furosemide. I mean, you're going to see that. I'm sure I'm going to see that. Uh, digoxin. You need to know certain things about these medications 
to be safe in practice because furosemide is given a lot, digoxin is given a lot, metoprolol is given a lot. I mean, some of these medications are given a lot. Like, I've seen them in clinical. You just need to know these. There's, there's some medicines on here that you just you can't know them all. Look how thick this book is, this medication book. You're not going to know all this stuff. Yeah, see, I even highlighted digoxin, okay? Because it is that important. Um, my dogs are barking. I'm going to end this now because my dogs are going crazy, but just look it up. Know these certain medicines that you hear of and you see a lot. Um, as you're in clinical, write them down. Keep those lab value papers that you do. Um, keep that stuff. Keep those medication papers because you're going to need them. And you can get rid of it after your NCLEX if you need to, but um, you need this stuff. You need it. And uh, all right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.